Hi, this is Tamara, a new mom from New Jersey, and this is baby Mia. My question is, what's the best way to protect my baby's skin? Well, today we're answering that question for all the parents out there. And here to help us save our baby's skin is board certified dermatologist, Dr. Rita Linkner. Dr. Linkner, thanks for being here today. Thank How you guys you? for having me it's today. It's a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So as a mother of two, I will tell you, it's so true. Baby skin is sensitive yeah. and it has to do with all those changes that are happening on the surface of the skin with the pH changes the infrastructural proteins beneath the surface of the skin. Remember, it's the body's largest organ, but it is more like a sieve when we're little. Yeah. And that delicate sensitivity means you have to pick the right products when it comes to your child. Well, and that was yep. my question. Yep. I, I'm sure baby skin, infant skin is different. Mm -hmm. Completely. Yep. And you have to think about what those changes are. And when you're th we're walking down that aisle in the drugstore picking out products, remember to go for that less is more mentality simpler, fewer active ingredients, the ones that leave out those common allergens and the ones that are jam packed with hydrating emollients, those are the ones that I like to pick out for my kids in particular. Gotcha, so the specific question is, Dr. Linko, is there a difference between the adult products for those formulas versus those formulated for babies? For sure, you'll see the product number of active ingredients is just gonna be fewer when it comes mm -hmm. to kids' products. It's definitely just a simpler active ingredient list. Okay. When you're reading that label, you'll just notice there are just fewer ingredients that'll be listed. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Linkner, can you run through it? What are the most common skin conditions new parents should look out for when dealing with their kitties? The most, I would say the three most common that I see, diaper rashes, okay. uh, oh, yeah. viral exanthems, mm -hmm. and then, of course, eczema, which we also call atopic dermatitis. Okay, now you, you call out baby viral exanthems. That's a mouthful. Break that down. That's for a good scramble <laughs> word. That is. You'll get like triple double letters for, oh, for yes. that one. Break it down for us. What exactly is that? So in the pandemic, fevers and rashes, I think, uh -huh. has all of us as parents riled up these days. But you should know they're very common self-limiting causes of just rashes and fevers that come together. Uh -huh. Rubiola, roseola. Uh, scarlet fever, those are just some of the common ones. Okay. I think the first big tip I would give, try to do a telemedicine visit with your pediatrician, gotcha. and they can oftentimes decide if you need to come into the office and diagnose what's going on beyond that. Okay. Okay. That's one of those areas where telemedicine is huge. I mean, that right. for you a dermatologist, right. you know your eyes are trained mm -hmm. what you can differentiate. Yes. In the pandemic, it's, it's shifted a lot to tele. Uh, it's true.